All right, welcome back to the Allegheny Health Network Nightly Sports Call. I'm Josh Taylor, taking your phone calls, 412-575-2600. Also taking your tweets, at Josh Taylor HD. Uh, Jason checks in first on Twitter and says, this better be Clint Hurdle's last game here. This team is a train wreck and has obviously quit on him. Um, that's actually one of the benchmarks for me as far as whether or not a manager probably keeps his job. Now, bear in mind, Clint Hurdle's in the last year of his contract. I believe he has an option here, just like Neil Huntington. But that was a benchmark I talked about a couple weeks ago. You know if a manager is probably on the way out if a team stops playing hard. I said a couple weeks ago this team was still fighting, and I thought that they were still giving the effort that was good enough to win. A night like tonight, it's really hard to tell when you were really down. Was it 12-4 to 4 at one point? And they come back a little bit, but lose 12-7. to 7. So the score doesn't dictate how much of a blowout that game was. If it was a closer game, maybe they lost four to three in extra innings and you just saw the effort dwindle, it might be easier for me to come to that conclusion. I don't think you're wrong. I just think that this game is hard to be the one. It, it's hard to use this game as the measurement of that metric. But I understand where you're coming from because I think that is a very important thing. If a team quits on a manager, he's probably on his way out. So we will go to the phone lines here, 412-575-2600. Let's go to Mark in Bethel Park. Mark, you're on the nightly sports call. Hi, hi, Josh. Um, thanks for taking my call. I thanks just want to ask, like with hockey, hockey has what's called a board of governors. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I've been following hockey since the 1970s, and my comment to that is all these guys on this board of governors are of Canadian heritage. Now, you know, we, we've seen in the playoffs this year, and not just in the playoffs, officiating's lousy. There's all this extracurricular activity after the whistle, and my point is, is that, you know, why doesn't hockey want to clean itself up? Why, why does no other team sport has a governing body? What, you know, I wish someone from the NHL would address the media. I have your answer. I have your answer. Say okay, what I'm you going to hang up and listen. Thank you. Here, just think about what you said. You answered your own question, technically. You just mentioned the NHL's board of governors and how the whole board of governors is of Canadian heritage. You probably answered your own question. A lot of hockey purists that don't want to see the game cleaned up. They don't want to see a more disciplined game. They want to see that old school, hard nosed, punch you in the face, score a goal here and there, tough guy NHL. That's what they want. The problem is the average fan doesn't want it. That's the problem. That is why when it comes to the ratings of the four major sports, the NHL is in last place and it ain't close. That's the answer to your question. Mark in Morningside. Mark, you're on the nightly sports call. Josh, how are you this evening? I appreciate you taking my call. Thanks for calling in. If you could help me understand something, it would benefit me greatly. I don't know whoever came up with these advanced analytics, Josh, and Sabre metrics. The history of baseball, which dates back to what, the 1880s, is about three things. Pitching, defense, and production at the plate. Now they're devaluating RBIs. How is that possible? That's not a now thing. That's actually been a few years in the making. That's not a now thing. But I see where you're coming from. I see what you're saying. And I, I appreciate the call. Here's the one thing you need to understand about RBIs as a metric. It is not as much of a reflection of how good you are as a hitter as much of it is a reflection of how good your lineup is. Because if you're not having a bunch of guys in front of you, guess what? You're not going to have chances to drive into runs. And you're not going to have many RBIs. There's a reason why the guys who usually lead teams in RBIs are usually somewhere between the second or third spot in the order and the fifth and the sixth spot in the order. Why? Because the guys in front of them are generally getting on base at a much higher clip. Read into that however you want. But if you're still looking at RBIs as a true indicator of how good a player is, I don't know what to tell you, but it's flawed. That You don't need a fancy calculator to prove that to you. All you need is a box score, some numbers in front of you, and a lot of common sense. That's all I'm going to say on that. We'll go to Mary Kay in Munhall. Mary Kay, you're on the nightly sports call. Hi, Josh. Thanks. Hi, for, Mary Kay. Thanks for talking to me. Hey, I, I am so frustrated with the Pirates. I'm a, <laughs> I am a diehard Pirates fan. Board. I have been a Pirates fan since before Bill Mazeroski hit that home run. Wow. And well, I think you. what bothers me the most is I think that they're using – Clint Hurdle as a scapegoat because that man is a terrific, terrific manager, and they're not giving him the tools to work with. And if he gets fired, I blame that on Nuttig. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Kay, for the call. 
here's where I'll kind of our two roads will diverge. I don't think Clint Hurdle is being used as a scapegoat for what this team is doing. A guy who I did think was being used as a scapegoat was the guy who came before him. John Russell, that's a guy who I thought was the patsy because they knew that they had to really rebuild this team in terms of talent. And the guy who actually had managing experience and would expect to do it longer would probably not have taken that job. John Russell did. And he was the guy that they trotted out there for a few years to allow this team to get punched in the face repeatedly before they were actually ready to move forward. And that's when Clint Hurdle came in. So I don't think Clint Hurdle's in that same role. I don't think this last year of his contract is one that's helping him. He's not in a great advantage. I'll, 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 I'll agree with you on this. They have not given him a lot of what he could use to actually win. Some of that is not his fault. Some of that's not management's fault. Some of that is on the fault of one Starling Marte. Some of that is on the fault of one Jung Ho Gung. When you continue to make bad decisions, decisions affect the people around you. And in their case, it affects their roster, it affects, it affects their ability to win ball games, and it affects how good the team is. That is not Clint Huddle's fault. That is not Neil Huntington's fault. It's on those two guys for the decisions they made. But I do understand where you're coming from. It does make it a lot harder for a manager to do his job. What makes most managers good managers? Talent. And good managers and bad managers will both tell you that. Let's go to Paul in Oil City before we take a break. Paul, you're on the nightly sports call. You there, Paul? Oh, yeah, for sure. What you got for me? Josh, I, I'm, I'm basically a, a baseball guy. I've done a lot of research on World Series and stuff. wrote a book about the World Series history, as a matter of fact. And I've noticed that this, this Penguin Series that, that could be a series, a seven-game final, where uh, the home team wins every game. It's possible. I, ex I expect I'm, as much going in. Now, in, in baseball, the first time that happened was 1909 when the Pirates played against the Tigers, and, and the home team won every game. Right. It's happened six or seven times since then, but it's not all that frequent, actually. That's of course, true. seven games aren't as frequent as, as, as the other games uh, series. But So do we know if, if, if the Penguins are going into a situation where they would have to win – all of the home games and lose the other away games to, to win the Stanley Cup? Or is it frequent? Is it common? Is it not? Um, I don't think it's happened before. And the, the most recent ones I can think of in 2009, they clinched in Detroit in Game 7. In 1991, they clinched on the road in Minnesota in Game 6 to win the Cup. And in 1992, they won the fourth game in Chicago. So they didn't have to win all of their games at home to win it. But... I'm glad you brought that up because it was an expectation I had before the series started. I picked the Penguins in seven. And I said it could be an up and down the rink type of series. It could be a home ice advantage kind of series because you're looking at, on one hand, a team at Pittsburgh who is probably, if not the best, one of the best teams at home in the entire league throughout the course of the regular season. You got another team in Nashville who's probably been the best team at home throughout the course of the playoffs. So it was evening out and it was measuring up to be that kind of series. So it would not surprise me if that were the case. I'm sure most people would not prefer for it to go to seven games just for the stress aspect of it. But the old saying is it's not a series till a team wins a game on the road. And this series might prove that wrong. But let's hope for the Penguins' sake that's not the case. We'll take a break. We come back. We'll answer phone calls and a couple more tweets. Stick around.